There's a storm across the valley The clouds are rolling in The afternoon is heavy on your shoulders There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away The whining of his wheels just makes it colder. Welcome to Community Forum. My name is Priscilla Almquist Olson, your host, and today is St. Lucia Day, December 13, 2022. This is the day when the oldest girl in the, a Scandinavian family gets up at dawn, makes breakfast, which includes coffee and uh, lusicate, buns, which are saffron buns, and serves it to her parents first and then the other siblings while they're in bed. Anyway, I was at Lucia 60 years ago uh, when I was a student at the University of Stockholm in Sweden, and my family wanted me to be the Lucia that day. Quite an honor. I had a white robe and I had a red sash because St. Lucia didn't die when the flames came around her. Uh, they tried to burn her at the stake, but she wouldn't burn, so the soldier took his sword, and you know what happened, so there's a red sash to represent that, uh, the blood. And um, anyway, she, uh, her light shone from Sicily, all the way from Sicily, all the way to Scandinavia on the darkest day of the year, which is today, December 13th, brought light into the darkness. And so the light overcame the darkness. Anyway, it's a beautiful story, beautiful legend, and all over Sweden today, <clears throat> Norway and uh, Denmark, there are Lucia fests with the singing, and it's just beautiful. Every, every office, every church, every town hall has Lucias. Anyway, just a side note, little education, and for those of you who need more, please look at my Snippets from Sweden program, and you'll find more traditions, customs, and events. But today our event is the uh, ex holiday extravaganza. Sounds really imposing, and it is, because it's the Lions, uh, uh, Easton Lions fundraiser, and Easton Live, and I'm sure some of you have been to the Easton Live dances, concerts, and today we have the Director of Communications for the Lions, Michelle McGee. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Priscilla. And uh, Bo um, Meredith Bonney, who is a uh, chef and baker, and she's going to tell us about all the goodies that, that you are going to consume on Saturday, December 17th, starting at 7. Is that correct? So that is the time that the second portion of this begins, Priscilla, but there's a special event happening prior to that. Oh, and what time is that? So, um, and we'll be doing a little on location shot from mm -hmm. our um, dancers from Dance Express. The doors open at 5 p.m. at the Hall on Foundry, and the show begins at 6 p.m. That will be the Dance Express dancers who are putting on a show. Generally, they are at our holiday festival. At the end of the parade, many of the kids file up the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall stairs, two flights, and they head up to that second floor where a family show is put on for the community. This year, we are having the Dance Express dancers prior to our holiday extravaganza concert for Easton Live. So they will go on at six o'clock, and then at seven o'clock, there'll be a quick turnover where we'll have Tommy Rain's band there for the second part of the evening. And Tommy Rain's is quite an extraordinary musician, isn't he? He is. <laughs> he has played um, downtown here in Easton a few times at the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall. He was the opening band last year for the holiday extravaganza, so that was a really awesome event. Those of you who attend the summer concerts know Tommy Raines. Um, and it's the um, Easton Shoveltown Cultural District. Uh, I'm on the board. And we sponsor 
seven concerts free in the summer and we get grants to pay for that and uh, it's quite exciting and people come with their their chairs and they sit on the steps of the Oak Saints Memorial Hall and up there uh, are musicians usually five or six quite a band Tommy Raines is an excellent musician wonderful singer so you're going to be really impressed and he sings all the songs that most people like from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, probably the 90s too, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it should be a fun evening. So, uh, and the dancers, tell us a little bit about them. I understand they've been a, serving uh, the community and the Lions uh, festivals for many years. They have, mm. so I don't know how long they have been in existence, but for at least 15 years, they have been a part of the Easton Lions Holiday Festival. The Easton Lions Holiday Festival it has, is decades old, um, but the Dance Express has been a part of that since early on. For at least 15 years, as I said, they've been doing the family show on the second floor of the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall. Quite often, uh, we have musicians that also entertain the crowd, sometimes magicians, um, other uh, bands or um, school bands. So they generally do about four dances, but this year, where they're the only featured act, they have quite a performance. So we'll get a little more information from them later about the dances that they'll be doing or maybe some of the holiday music that they'll be using. But they are a great friend to the Easton Lions Club and to the community of Easton. They also are a 501c3. They have their own charity. It's called Together at Heart. So the Easton Lions Club will be making a donation to their 501c3 charity. That charity, um, supports dancers. It supports dancers' scholarships to go to different competitions. It supports dance lessons if a family needs that. So mm -hmm. it's a great charity here in Easton and we're happy to support it. Great. Sounds like a wonderful evening uh, from beginning to end. And when does it end? I believe 11 o'clock. My yes. goodness. And uh, is there food? There is food. Yeah. That's the responsibility of the person on my left. Okay. So there's going to be some yummy food. Okay, so Meredith Bonney, would you describe some of this yummy food? Sure, for our I feel like I'm going to be the icing on the cake of this amazing festivity. That's huh? right, that's yeah. right. Yes, well, and that's an apt way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that I was honored when Rochelle asked me if I would provide some snacks for this um, extra special event. I love supporting things in the community of Easton. Um, it's my home. Uh, we, we feel very much part of it. And whenever I can give back, I like to do so. So I don't want to reveal all, but I will tell you that if you're familiar with my cooking, I think you can expect to find some charcuterie boards as well as some sweets, um, maybe some miniature peppermint candy cane whoopie pies, some brownies, um, cookies, uh, certainly enough snacks to go around to uh, make everybody happy and make the night that much more special. Good. So it's going to be a surprise for all of us. <laughs> Except for the peppermint whoopie pie. Oh. <laughs> that has been revealed. Did you and bring requested. samples? No. <laughs> what? Say that again. The peppermint what? Whoopie pies. <laughs> oh, peppermint whoopie pies. These pie. have been a big hit. I'm actually teaching a class on this. And I just did teach a class at the Festival of Trees for my charcuterie boards. But... Uh, they are just chocolate whoopie pies, but they're filled with um, peppermint frosting, mm. and then they're dipped in candy canes. Oh, gee. So, very festive for yes. the event, you might say. <laughs> so one teaser, and then the rest, surprise. Surprise. <laughs> Good. And so, um, Meredith, tell us a little bit more about your business. Okay. So Rosemary Fresh is a very small um, catering company. Um, I, in fact, I hate to even call it, I'm not really a caterer. I'm kind of like the person that you call when you want some homemade muffins, cookies. I do everything from happy occasions to unfortunately when something sad has occurred in your family, I try to come to the rescue and lift your spirits through food. I always say, Food is love, and I tried to provide that to mm -hmm. families around Easton. Mm -hmm. So I'm very appreciative for all the support that I've received here um, and continue to look forward to events um, 
like the one that we're going to have this Saturday. Um, I've held dinners at Quisit, at Oaks Ames Hall, and um, love, love putting on a, a good culinary show. And you involve your family. It is very homespun. Like I say, it's small. I think in a time when everything is big and everyone, you know, Amazons of the world, I'm very much homespun. When we put on an event, you know, my husband's in the kitchen with me, my friends are serving as uh, waiters and waitresses, and um, my kids are are sometimes washing dishes. <laughs> so it's well, I've very seen family run I'm... or being the mater d. Yes. yes. My littlest Leo is quite the showman, so he does enjoy that. Right. And also they've been wait staff, the yes. two older ones. Yes, they have. Yeah. We we kind of share all jobs. So. Well, I can I can identify with that because um, my mother started a catering company um, in the 50s uh, because she realized that her children were going to college and she needed money. And so we did small cocktail parties, but also dinners for 350 people. Uh, all, and, and all the food had to come out hot at one time. <laughs> and I remember being paid $5 as a waitress for the whole evening. And so did the other waitresses get five bucks. And I think the, the meals for a roast, a pot roast, mashed potatoes, um, butternut squash, and then these wonderful, um, what do you call those? Puffs. Turnovers. No. Popovers. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, the puffs, you know, like. Whoopie pies. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> no the, the puffs that you have, then you cut it in half and you put vanilla ice cream in and hot fudge mm. sauce. Profiteroles? No. No, they're just cream puffs. <laughs> cream puffs. Oh. At least I got you in the right direction. <laughs> yes, cream puffs. That and was a fun game. So it was, a, again, it was a family affair. My uh, I'm the oldest, that was my sister, younger sister, and my kid brother. My father was in charge of potatoes. I remember having this potato machine. You put the potatoes in and everything goes around and they uh, do most of the, you know, cutting off of the skin, most of it. You know, and then you take them out and you, you know, my dad was good at that. But anyway, I, I know what that's like because you, you all pull together. You do. Yeah. Yep. And that's how it gets out the door hot. <laughs> Right. And she's pulling together for our community this week, yes. too. Yes. And so, Michelle, so are you. You, uh, you have a full-time job, and yet you seem to work very late. I've gotten emails from you at hours when I'm still up, and I know that's late. And um, so, how do you do it all? Uh, <laughs> I think it, mostly attitude, I think, Priscilla, right? Mm -hmm. I think that um, I've found that the <clears throat> more... Um, the more I give back, you know, the more, it's amazing. I don't even know really how to describe it. It's almost like a little miracle. Like the more you give, the more time you have. I mean, the more you give, the more you get, yes. But I'm amazed how when you work together and you form a nice community like the, just the three women here, and we can each think of three more and three more, men and women, um, mm -hmm. you know who to call when you need an interview or you know who to call when you need a whoopie pie or you know who to call when you need a banner or printed materials and you know staying local is really important to I think all three of us here mm -hmm. certainly to the Lions Club um, certainly to ECAT I'm sure all about local mm -hmm. and all about mm -hmm. community um, Rosemary Fresh has been our caterer for um, we also, in addition to the family show, on the evening of the holiday festival, we have held a jazz um, event at the Quisit House, and Rosemary Fresh has been our caterer for that for the last couple of years, and um, the food is fantastic. When, when, is that going to be on Friday? Um, so that was during the um, holiday festival. Oh. We would have it on the, on the, the evening of I that. See. So <laughs> last year we added the holiday extravaganza Friday night at the hall. Um, but on Saturday night we would have a jazz festival at mm -hmm. the Quisit House. And mm -hmm. Rosemary Fresh was our caterer. So. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, keeping it local, using Shoveltown Brewery for drinks. and Sure. Now yeah. tell me about um, where did these funds go? Tell me a little bit about the Lions' uh, contributions Absolutely. to the community and to the wider world. Yes, for sure. So uh, Lions Club International is a 100% charitable 
organization. There are no paid lions. Um, even our international president, Brian Sheehan, is a volunteer. It's a 100% volunteer organization. So back in 1917, Helen Keller came to a Lions Club meeting and she asked the Lions to be the Knights of the Blind. So one of our major missions oh. is sight. So if you know very little about the Lions, you probably know that they recycle eyeglasses, <laughs> yeah. right? Yes. So there are several receptacles around town where you can donate eyeglasses and those go out to people who need eyeglasses. So that is a huge portion of <clears throat> our mission. But we have five tenants, the Lions. In addition to sight, we also support childhood cancer, diabetes, the environment, and hunger. So if there's an, a, a national or international emergency, Lions funds go to those kinds of things. Within the town of Easton, the Lions, Easton Lions Club raises funds and those funds go to uh, MLERF, which stands for the Massachusetts Lions Eye Research Foundation. Last year, the Matt state of just the state of Massachusetts was able to donate six hundred thousand dollars to eye research. Mm. So one hundred thousand dollars went to Children's Hospital. One hundred thousand dollars went to Cha uh, Shapin's Eye Institute, and the, and so on. The Easton Lions Club um, in Massachusetts, we have five districts, and of the five districts, the Easton Lions, uh, the MLERF. Uh, collected around seven hundred thousand dollars last year. Fifty-two thousand dollars came from the Easton Lions Club. That's impressive. We won an award this year for wow. being the number one club. So just the town of Easton raised fifty-two thousand dollars for eye research, and that comes di directly from your audience. Mm -hmm. It is the businesses in this town that give that money. It is the people who come to events like this, buy raffle tickets, shop at our thrift store. Every mm -hmm. single dime that comes in goes out because in addition to that $52,000 that we gave to iResearch, we um, give grants to mm -hmm. our local sports teams, to our Boy Scouts, to We Do Care, raising multicultural kids. We have a fund screening process where you can go on our website and fill out an application and explain your project or explain your need. And there is a fund screening board within the Lions Club that reads the applications, makes a recommendation to the board of directors. And then once that's approved, we put it forth to the whole membership. Mm -hmm. So thousands and thousands of dollars mm -hmm. also go out to the local Easton Yeah, community. and I know that the thrift store is a big part of the funds that you get in. It is the largest part of yes. the funds that we get in. So the thrift store is open uh, <laughs> probably 48 weeks a year. We only, we will, uh, we are open for the last day of this year, this Saturday, December 17th, but we will be closed on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. We'll open up again the, um, in January, um, and we take ve very little um, Saturdays off. We're open all summer. Um, usually Labor Day weekend we're closed, sometimes Thanksgiving weekend, but sometimes not. It's a big shopping day where we're not closed <laughs> this year, the Saturday of uh, Thanksgiving, and it was a big shopping day. So. Yes, and, and you, one can find brand new items in there also. and. Uh, most of the things that are accepted are gently used and oh, just beautiful. I got for my securities lawyer son-in-law, who's also this magnificent chef who could open a restaurant. I mean, he's the kind of person who goes in the refrigerator and says, hmm, and grabs things out and then puts together this magnificent meal. Well, I got him a aluminum, brand new roaster with the insert rack and so forth, and it's oval and it's this big. And then I got two chef, white chef, sh what do you call those? The jackets. jackets. I saw you that day. Yes, yes. So brand new, cute. It's still but, in the package. Yes, still yes. in the package. Yes. So he's getting three brand new items. <laughs> so don't think it's just used stuff. And even if it is, I have picked up some Swedish glass, and um, it was marked a dollar each, and they were both worth forty each, minimum, maybe fifty each. So I gave it to somebody who uh, 
works at the library for free teaching English to refugees and immigrants. That is really lovely, Priscilla. That's another thing that, that, that our thrift store is really great for, is that <coughs> we don't waste anything. So we get an exorbitant amount of books donated. Uh -huh. More, I mean, we could fill the whole store with books. Um, but when we get books in that we can't use, we, we pass them on. So there's an adult learning center in Brockton, and they are always super grateful for the books that we donate because those are, a lot of those people are English is their second language. Mm -hmm. They want to practice <coughs> reading, so we bring big boxes of books mm -hmm. over there. Um, the thrift store is in a really efficient and great place where no waste occur occurs. Mm -hmm. even, even our trash, we recycle metal, scrap metal, we recycle glass, we recycle cardboard. Um, it's a very efficient place over there. And one of the things you said, Priscilla, that you, you know the, you paid a dollar and it was worth this. Um, we have people who come into that thrift store and say, you know, I'm gonna give you five dollars for that, even though it's marked for a dollar, because every dime of it goes to charity. It's a donation. You, th there's no tax paid or anything like that because you're making a donation. Well, I, I, my rule is this. I don't go to the thrift store unless I bring donations. So I'm doing, um, uh, it's, it's called Swedish Death Cleaning. <laughs> and there's a book called The Art of Swedish Death Cleaning by Maria Magnusson. A lot of people I know have read it. And so the idea is that you don't want to die and leave all this distribution of assets and prized and wonderful treasures that you have so that your daughter can put it in a dumpster. <laughs> you know, that's what I am afraid of. Mm. So I always bring donations, and most of the time those donations are worth much more than uh, sometimes my purchases. Uh, so, but I always purchase something too, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> for other people. You are one. You are a faithful customer, Priscilla. I am. Faithful donator, faithful um, purchaser, and came out this summer and did a, a large expose on the thrift store that was just wonderful. And Michelle was part of that. She was the tour guide of the thrift store. Yes. And um, uh, and Ernie Smith was the photographer. The he filmed it and. Michelle and I spent three hours here at the studio with Jack Gallagher editing the whole darn thing <laughs> from three hours to 29 minutes. Now, where could they see this, Priscilla? Of all okay. the places, where could they find that? Okay, well, you find that by going online at Easton Cat, one word, EastonCat.org. And, and you click on Community Forum, which is this show. And you will see, uh, find the Lions Thrift Store. It's a lovely 29-minute expose. You can see everything that's there. And by the way, that place has been so organized by you, Michelle, and Sherry Anderson. So it's like going into a lovely department store. Everything is organized. Everything is, all the creamers are together. All the vases are together. All the this and that. And then there are little signs telling you what it is in case you don't realize what, what the item is. And um, some of the most popular things is some of the stemware, some beautiful stemware that's in there. So you can always find a treasure, and it's fun. It is fun. And that was a great interview. <coughs> and Priscilla did such a good job that um, sometimes the Lions Club likes, we uh, recognize a lion of the month each month, but sometimes we like to recognize a non-Lion member of the month. So the following month, mm -hmm. Priscilla was our guest at an Easton Lions Club meeting, our guest for dinner, and we surprised her and presented her Aww. with the non-Lions member of the month award. award yeah. You did an awful lot of work on that, I Priscilla. thought I was going to be um, harassed into joining. <laughs> Oh, I asked her to be my guest, but I can do that too if you are yes, interested. I know. Yes, I know the person who holds the applications right in his I back know, pocket. I know, and I, you know, Avery Lee Williams was a good friend, and he was the top um, recruiter. Recruiter. Yes. For yes. The Lions, and he, you know, asked me. So, I can tell you that as soon as this uh, Swedish death cleaning is finished, 
I would be in a position to join the Lions. Oh, oh. Let me be the one who brings you in. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I would be delighted. Okay. And those of you who are out there, you, you should think about joining the Lions too, because a few years ago, they were voted the best in the world. Not the nation, not the state, but the world. And when I go to Sweden, I go to the, in the um, Lions, they call them the in Lions uh, uh, Secondhand Boutique. That's their name, Lions Secondhand Boutique. That's the name of their thrift stores. And I bring back all of these wonderful items, very cheap, and then sell them at a very good price uh, economically. I mean, very cheap. People love, and I uh, just completed a, um, a time at the First Lutheran Church's uh, Café Stuga, which is in Swedish means coffee cottage. It's a big fair, and I'm going to be in Shrewsbury in June at the midsummer. That's usually the weekend of the 21st, or the day closest to the 21st, midsummer. Uh, at the Scandinavian Athletic Club in Shrewsbury. Mm. So if any of you want, uh, or if any of you are dying to find something, uh, call me up and uh, I'm sure I have it at a very good price. Because I don't only want to uh, sell things, uh, but I want to spread the culture. Mm. And so s people who appreciate Scandinavian art, design, whatever, uh, really enjoy having something at a, at a decent price. Because some of the, and I have Swedish glass too. That's yeah. awesome, I Priscilla. Do. I that, do. That's great to hear that the Lions do that there as well. Yeah. Have their own thrift store. Yes, yes, yeah. and I brought back um, a, uh, a, a, a bag, I think it was a plastic bag, that had uh, Lions thrift store of uh, Shurn, I think it was the sister island to the one my parents, my mother's parents came from, Orst, on the west coast, and um, yeah, and so John Morgan said he's going to frame it. And and if John Morgan um, said he's going to do it, he's going he's to gonna do, do it. He's going to do it. Right. In fact, the most recent thing that he framed and put in the thrift store yes. is Avery Lee Williams' oh, jacket. Nice. Yes, when you come in to our stairwell, when you get to the top of the stairs, if you just turn around and look where our awards are, um, the Williams family donated Avery's uh, a jacket with all of his awards and badges and pins, and that is in a beautiful glass case right, right in the thrift right. store. It's so great. we'll make sure that the Swedish mm. thing goes right next to that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And thanks for mentioning that we were best club in the world. There are 48 thousand clubs in this world and Easton Massachusetts was voted best club in the world in 2008 and that was the year that we had our first female Lions Club president Nancy Sullivan uh -huh. yes uh -huh. yes so two uh, magnificent uh wonders there yes yeah, yeah. yes and we have a, a lot of wonders in the Lions Club yeah I'm trying yeah. Michelle, quick question. The event on Saturday, is it sold out? Can people still get tickets? Ah, that's a great question. So um, it is not sold out. It's more than half sold out, though. And the tickets are only $10, and you can get those tickets on the Easton Lions website, which is www.eastonlions.org. Um, there, there'll be a tab there for you can click on Easton Live or you can click on Next Event and it will bring you there. They are also sold through Eventbrite. So if you go on Eventbrite mm -hmm. and you just mm -hmm. type in Easton Live or you type in Easton Mass or Holiday Extravaganza, that will come up that way too. You can always come into the thrift store and buy a ticket or uh, we will be open this Saturday from um, 10 to 2 if there are tickets left. I don't know, Priscilla, I don't know how many viewers you have, but might sell out within the next hour here now, I don't know. <laughs> Can happen. So if you love to dance or love to watch people dance, love great music and enjoy uh, yummy food, this is the place to be on Saturday, December 17th. At, oh, doors open at 5.30 and six o'clock, the dancers from uh, Dance Express will be there. Uh, to entertain you and uh, you can see some of the young people from Easton and, and, and what they have been able to achieve in dance. Um, and then at 7, uh, the, uh, the uh, band starts, mm -hmm. the concert, and I'm, is that when the food starts coming out? Yes, that's when the food will come out and it's, it's $10 for the ticket, you get two shows. 
Right, you get two shows. Two shows and in some one. Great, and some great food uh, to go with the spirit of the season. Yes. So those of you who are listening and watching, please put that on your calendar. Saturday, December 17th, starts at uh, doors open at 5.30, it's 6 o'clock the dancers, 7 o'clock the bands, and the food. What more can you get uh, in this day and age for $10? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Meredith. Thank, thank you. you, Michelle. Thank you, Priscilla. The two M's. Yes. <laughs> M and M, and I'm not talking candy. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me thank you. today. And uh, we'll ho hopefully we'll see you there at the... Uh, Knights of Columbus Hall on Turnpike Street in Southeastern. Until next time, Priscilla Almquist Olson, uh, and wishing you a very m merry and happy holiday season. Until next time, be well.